My name is Mar Bolinches. I'm here at the University of Texas, and I will be presenting um, the work that we've been doing on the development of a DG compressible navier Stokes solver uh, using MFEM. Um, and this is a, some work that we've been doing at the at the PECUS uh, development team. Um, so I'll be speaking particularly about the GPU implementation and some of the particularities of uh, what we've been doing. Okay. Um, so the the Odin Institute or uh, the U, here at UT Austin, uh, it's interested in the simulation, high fidelity simulations of an inductively coupled plasma torch. Uh, this is part of the P, you know of a big project, P sub three project. Um, and uh, initially, even though the it's it's a complex multiphysics problem, uh, we are initially focusing on individual physics. Um, so this is in particular, this is going to be uh, the flow solver uh, that I was speaking about. Um, for this project, we chose MFEM, which is why I'm here um, for the for the development of uh, the different tools. Um, and in particular, uh, we're interested in high order compact schemes because they are um, very it can be implemented efficiently on, on GPU infrastructures of, uh, as as we've been. Uh, as it has been mentioned earlier. Um, and in particular, we're choosing the, the discontinuous galerian scheme, um, which we might change in the future, I don't know, but that's that's what we have at the moment. And one of the problems that we had is that uh, this wasn't initially supported uh, for GPU. Um, that is um, version MFM uh, 4.2, which is what we started with. Um, Okay, so what we have at the moment, it's a, a baseline CPU code. Uh, it's based on example 18, um, <clears throat> and it's being verified uh, using the mass library, which is another library developed here. Um, it's a manufactured a method of manufactured solution approach. Um, and so, as you can see, the uh, you know some of the characteristics of the of this code are provided by MFEM. Uh, you know, you already know it has been discussed, but you know, it's a finite element code, it's arbitrary order of accuracy and it has you know MPI parallel and structured and we have been working on other things uh, to make our simulations uh, a bit more um, comfortable for us uh, we have added support for HDF file HDF5 file output um, we can also restart with arbitrary number of MPI tasks uh, we have implemented a number of uh, binary conditions um, you know uh, wall adiabatic isothermal and so on. Um, so that's what we have at the moment. And um, the idea is um, <clears throat> we've started um, porting these to GPU. Uh, some of the functions are already, you have already support for GPU on directly of of MFM. Uh, some others uh, we have had to do it. And so this has required the duplication uh, of some of the code. Um, in order to do this porting, we've been using the MFM GPU directives. Uh, and I will show a couple of examples of how we've been doing this. Um, in, in the following slides. Um, the GPU efforts that we have been doing are, are focused in two main areas. Uh, first, we are trying to increase the level of parallelism um, within the GPU. And on the other hand, we're also trying to optimize these kernels in terms of memory management. Um, this is an open source project. Uh, and you can see both the code and some documentation in, in these two links, um, which I'll post later on the Slack channel. Okay, so I'll just get to the GPU implementation. Um, okay, so this is the, the weak uh, DG formulation for the navier Stokes equations. As you can see, uh, there are two types of terms. Um, the blue ones are integrals over the element of the, over the volume of the elements. And these are very benign terms because uh, these are element wise uh, functions and you know, they can be cast as a metric vector multiplication. This is all very uh, efficient. But then the red term is a, it's an integral over the faces of the element, and uh, you know can also be cast as a magic vector multiplication, but it's a bit more complex due to the you know, to the fact that we need information from neighboring elements. Um, so here we saw that the, the an opportunity to increase the level of uh, um, parallelism within the GPU, because at the moment, the, the way we've seen uh, this implemented on MFEM is uh, MFEM has an outer loop um, that runs over the elements or, or over the faces, depending on the type of integral. And then within 
each element or each phase, you could launch uh, a GPU kernel to compute the phase or element contribution uh, to that particular element. Um, and so we, we, what we have been trying to do is uh, to get a single kernel uh, and do all the phases or all the elements simultaneously. Um, we tried this initially with example 18, uh, and, we and we saw much better performance uh, implementing or following this approach, this other approach. Uh, however, uh, I'm one of the 54% of the users uh, that are new to MFEM, so uh, this might not be we use the MFM nonlinear form, uh, which probably wasn't the greatest option for us um, to do this. Um, and, and particularly, we saw lots of memory transfer, like uh, GPU, CPU memory transfers um, within this uh, within this class here, the, the nonlinear form. Uh, so probably not the best option, but definitely saw um, a greater improvement going um, this other approach. Uh, as I mentioned, we're using the uh, GPU macros, the MFM GPU macros. Uh, these are, you know, which are great because we can run, uh, we have been able to run on both uh, CUDA and uh, uh, both NVIDIA and AMD cards. Um, so that, that's, been, that's been great. Um, and I'll show you just, uh, just a couple of examples. Uh, so this is, uh, as I was mentioning, this is uh, how the outer loop of um, the MFM functions look like, uh, you know, uh, for each element, we could uh, get data uh, and then launch a GPU kernel, uh, whereas this is what we've been trying to do, group all the elements by, so group threads by element. So that is, uh, we map the, the group of threads to a particular element, and then we perform these operations. Uh, the phase integration was a bit tricky uh, because we cannot run uh, by phase. Uh, and this is because, you know, different, phases of a particular element would override each other when writing to global memory. Uh, so instead, uh, we're again uh, grouping uh, the threads by element and looping through the phases of the element. Um, okay, so that's, that's how we've been trying to get um, more uh, higher level of parallelism. Uh, and now I'll talk about, a bit about the kernel optimizations or how we've been trying to do so. Um, uh, I think it has been mentioned before, uh, this is just, I guess, a recap. Uh, you know, we have three different levels of memory uh, with different uh, access rates. Uh, it has been mentioned before, the CPU-GPU transfer is really, is really the, the bottleneck. Uh, and uh, we've seen this and we're trying to avoid this uh, at all costs. And at the moment, we don't have any of this happening. Um, and then we have the global GPU and shared me and shared memory, uh, you know, which is a lot faster than the than the global GPU. And even though the global GPU memory access rate is not great, uh, it depends on how you're doing it. Um, and you know, this is off the um, NVIDIA developer website, and you can see that you can only get the the peak uh, bandwidth uh, if you are accessing contiguous continuous uh, memory locations um, within an array. Uh, and this bandwidth drops dramatically as you have offs offsets in the data. Um, so uh, as it has been mentioned in the talk before, we've been trying to use shared memory. Um, you know, first uh, to coalesce less memory accesses, that is to like try to get the maximum uh, memory access bandwidth, but also trying to reduce the global memory uh, accesses. Uh, obviously, this can, only, this can only be done if uh, a particular data is accessed multiple times within, within one loop. Um, the other problem that we've seen is that this memory is very scarce, so we quickly run out of, of shared memory. So, you know, in a way, this needs to be, this, this resource needs to be handled uh, wisely. And I'll show you um, one example where we have done this uh, type of optimization. Um, so this is uh, my first attempt to implement the multiplication by the inverse of the mass matrix. Um, and as you can see here, at the uh, what you, you can see the, the threads are grouped by element, as I was mentioning, and um, this digit uh, array is accessed multiple times in an unordered manner to do the matrix vector multiplication. And so what I did uh, was to put this data, the data in this digit array, into uh, 
a shared array. And so what we do first is um, to move this data uh, into this array, uh, we require the threads to be synchronized uh, because we need this data to be fin to be filled out uh, before operating with it. And then we do the operations um, with this data, um, with this shared array. Um, and as you can see, the, the time to execute this kernel takes up, it's, it's, a, it's just about half the time of the previous kernel. Uh, so it's, it is a pretty good improvement. Um, and notice that we have accomplished two things. We have um, reduced the number of global memory accesses, but also like these global memory accesses now happen in an ordered manner. Uh, see that all the threads of all the elements access contiguous, uh, continuous uh, memory locations with, within this digit array. Um, another improvement that will be possible will be to include uh, the this element uh, inverse matrix into shared memory, but this is however not possible because we don't have enough uh, shared memory. Okay, uh, so that's how essentially this philosophy of trying to, you know, of kernel optimization has been used throughout. Um, and, um, and I just wanted to make a, a, a you know, comment on, on the phase integration, uh, uh, which is for us now the bottleneck of, of this solver. Um, so for, for the phase integration at the moment, we are accessing for each phase, we're accessing the, all the data, uh, all the data points of the neighboring elements. Um, so, and that's already really bad because, you know, it, it means more global memory accesses, but also uh, by default, these are always non-ordered memory accesses. So we are we have more memory accesses and you know with low memory access bandwidth. So this at the moment, as I say, this is, it takes about half the time um, you know of the iteration uh, is is taken up by by this uh, phase integration. And this is in contrast with other methods where you know where you have a more reduced stencil, you only need data at the faces of the neighboring element. Um, so this is uh, something that we would like to to work on, uh, maybe uh, collaborate on how uh, with the MFM people. Um, and that's pretty much all I had. Um, so just to recap, uh, so we have the, this code, it's open source um, and it's available. Um, and we've been trying to, um, it, we have done it. Uh, we, we have we have a GPU version, it's working. Uh, it, has, it doesn't have all the features on the GPU version, uh, but, it, but it is working. Um, and we have tried to increase the level of parallelism um, and used and tried to, to use a lot of shared memory. And uh, the phase integration at the moment is something that we're working on. Uh, and we've been able to get some, some improvements so far. And that's all, uh, just wanted to, uh, acknowledge the support of the Department of Energy. Uh, this is a project uh, funded by the Department of Energy and the National Nuclear Security Administration. Uh, thank you, and do you have any questions?